In today's video, I'm going to do an AP tier list of the 14 AP classes that I took in high school. I was a national AP scholar and I passed all of my AP exams that I took in high school. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So for our tiers, we have the S tier, which is the classes that I think you should take and that I loved. After that, we have the A tier for Almost Amazing. These are classes that were close to that S tier, but just not quite as great as those that are in that S tier. Next up, we have the B category for the classes that were about right and classes that I would take again, but I wouldn't say that they were amazing. After that, we have the C category. So C in this situation, I have it for could take. So these are the classes that I thought were I was neutral on. You know, I could take them again or I could not take them again. I didn't like them that much, but at the same time, they weren't necessarily brutal. And then in the last category, we have the classes that I disliked and that I thought were absolutely brutal, classes that I would never want to take again and that I thought were just really difficult or really boring. So that being said, let's go ahead and place our first class. So first up, we've got AP Statistics. For AP Statistics, I'm going to put that in the S tier. Now, the reasons why... AP Statistics overall, the content is pretty easy to learn and you can learn it really quick. For me, I took this class online and I was able to finish a whole semester of it in only two weeks because I could go at my own pace. So as far as the math AP classes go, this is definitely the easiest. So I'm going to put it in the S tier. After that, we have AP Macroeconomics. Macroeconomics, I'm going to put in the almost amazing category. AP Macro is a class that honestly, I had a lot of fun in. It's a class that I thought was pretty interesting. Also, it's not too difficult. If you're someone who's willing to put in the time and effort, it's pretty easy to get a five. So AP Macro, I'm going to put almost amazing category. Really enjoyed the class. If you have a good teacher, it can also be a lot of fun. After that, we've got AP Calculus AB. So AP Calculus AB, I'm going to put in the about right and would take again category. Overall, it's not too difficult. So I wouldn't say that it was brutal or anything like that. The class is definitely doable. The exam isn't too difficult either. I got a four on it, but I also didn't study at all. And I didn't really pay attention that much in the class because it was my last semester senior year. And I knew I wouldn't be able to transfer that AP credit since I already maxed out all the AP credits that I could transfer to the, to the school that I'm going to, which is Duke University. So overall, AP Calculus AB, it's about right. You know, I'd probably take it again. After this, we've got AP Physics 2. So AP Physics 2, I'm going to put in the could take category. So this is a class where I'm neutral on it. I really didn't love it. I'm not necessarily totally convinced that I take it again. But overall, it's one where if you want to take it, you can. If you don't want to, that's also fine. Um, so overall, I was pretty neutral on it. It's a little bit difficult, but it really varies by concept. Con some concepts were really easy and some were really difficult. So it can be kind of hit or miss depending on the section that you're learning in that class. Next up, we have AP Chemistry. AP Chemistry is the class that I found to be the most difficult in high school, and I thought it was absolutely brutal. Now, I went into AP Chemistry with zero chemistry experience. I hadn't even taken an introductory chemistry class in high school at all, and I was taking it online, so basically having to teach myself. So it was fairly difficult for me. It was definitely my hardest class. Honestly, my senior year, it probably took the same amount of time on that one AP Chemistry class as the other five classes combined, um, and they were all APs as well. So AP Chemistry, I definitely thought it was fairly brutal. Next up, we've got AP Microeconomics. AP Microeconomics is S tier, guys. AP Micro, it's really just about understanding graphs. It's a lot of fun, especially if you get a cool class with a cool teacher. Overall, the concepts aren't too difficult either. So I would highly recommend the class. I think pretty much everyone should take it. Also, it can be really useful if you're looking to go into business and things like that, or just really have a better understanding of how finance and economics works in the real world. I found it to be pretty insightful, and honestly, it's a pretty cool class. Next up, we've got AP Computer Science A. I'm going to put that in the almost amazing tier. And the reason why is AP Computer Science A, one, it's just so useful, right? If you can know how to code that's something that is just really helpful. And even if you don't go into computer science, for me right now, I don't plan to go into it. It's something where if you can understand how these codes work, it just gives you a new perspective on technology, social media, and just really how the world is moving forward and going into the future. So I highly recommend this class. If you don't have coding experience, that's okay. I went into the class without taking computer science principles before it, and I still ended up getting an A in my first semester. And then in my second semester, I think I got an A minus, but the only reason that I got an A minus and not an A is because I knew my grades could drop a little bit since it was going to be a finalized grade after admissions had come out. So I was able to slack a little bit. But yeah, AP Computer Science A, I highly recommend the course. It can be pretty fun too, making projects and things like that. So I would recommend that one. Next up, we've got AP English Literature and Composition. 
So I would take this class again. I'd put it in the about right category. It's not a class that's necessarily crazy fun, especially if you're not necessarily in the reading. But if you're someone who ends up having a teacher who is a little bit more relaxed and doesn't necessarily assign a ton of reading, or if they do, is okay if you're using Spark Notes and not necessarily reading every page, it can be a cool class. For me, just being 100% honest, I read maybe two books the whole year. The rest, I just Spark Notes. And I ended up getting a three on the AP exam, but I also didn't study for it really at all because once again, I knew I had maxed out the amount of AP credits I could transfer. So overall, AP literature, it can be pretty easy. It really varies a lot depending on the teacher that you have. Same thing with AP Lang. If you end up with a really easy teacher, you're probably going to really enjoy the class and have a lot of fun. If your teacher is really strict and assigns a ton of work and a ton of reading, then it might not be as fun. Um, and it could be potentially a lot more difficult. So with AP Lang and Lit, you're really going to want to pay attention to who the teacher is going to be. Um, and if it switches up on you at some point as far as who the teacher is for the class, that can really affect how the class is taught and how your experience is in that class as well. All right, next up, we've got AP US Government and Politics. That's going to be S tier for me. So AP US Government and Politics is a class that I personally really enjoyed. I also thought that it was probably in the top four easiest classes that I took for AP classes in high school. Overall, if you have a good understanding of the United States government and political system in general already, then taking that class should be pretty easy. There's not necessarily a ton of information you have to memorize. I got a five on it um, as a sophomore. Overall, I would say pretty easy class. It's also pretty fun, so I would recommend it for sure. Next up, we've got AP Physics 1. So AP Physics 1, I'm going to put in the about right would take again category. One thing I like about AP Physics 1 is it does a good job of actually preparing you for the SAT. And the reason why is because it really teaches you a lot of those concepts for algebra that you're going to need to know come the SAT. So that's one reason I really like the class. Also, understanding motion, kinematics, things like that is really cool. Now, one thing that bothered me about the class is circuits, right? Circuits are something that I personally just never vibe with. I never vibe with circuit circuits, not in AP Physics 1 and not in AP Physics 2. I really did bad, really bad on both those units, both years that I had circuits. Um, but other than circuits, I'd say both AP Physics 1 and AP Physics 2, for me, it was overall pretty doable and pretty fun to learn about. All right, next up, we've got AP Comparative Government. AP Comparative Government, I'm going to put in the almost amazing category. Now, the reason I'm going to put AP Comparative Government there is because overall, it's pretty interesting. You know, I wouldn't put it S tier just because it's not necessarily information that's super familiar to you. So you are going to have to spend a fair amount of time memorizing. So it'll take more work than U.S. government will. But it's also really interesting to see how different government and political systems around the world compare to each other. And it's something that really kind of opens up your eyes to how the rest of the world works. So I think that it's valuable. And I would say it can also be pretty fun too. I took it online and I think if it was in person, I would have had even more fun because you could have interactions and debates with classmates. So overall, I would definitely put it in the A tier. All right, next up, we've got AP Biology. AP Biology, I am going to put in the, in the about right would take again category. The reason why, it's a really useful class, right? Understanding how the body works, not only just humans, but other organisms as well. Is something that's important and also I think that it's pretty interesting as well it is a little bit difficult but it's a class where if you're good at interpreting graphs tables or good at performing labs or understanding how labs should be structured then you're gonna end up doing pretty good on the exam so overall it can be fun especially if you have a cool class doing labs with your friends can be awesome and a great experience so overall I'm gonna put it in that B tier next up AP US history AP US History, I'm also going to put in the B tier for about right. I would take this class again personally. Um, history at times and AP US History as well, it can be a little bit boring, right? Um, obviously, it's all in the past, so it's not necessarily the most entertaining class, which is why I wouldn't put, in, put it in the A or S tier. Also, there's a lot of information that you have to learn, so I definitely wouldn't put it in the A tier. But at the same time, if you get a good teacher and you're able to learn about the material, it can be an interesting experience. Adam Norris is one of your best friends in that class. If you don't know who Adam Norris is, you can look him up on YouTube. He does chapter reviews and unit reviews for the course. For me personally, I didn't read the textbook once in high school for AP US History. I just watched Adam Norris's videos and I ended up getting a five. So I highly recommend Adam Norris if you're looking to prep for AP US History. Next up, we've got AP English Language and Composition. All right, so AP English Language and Composition. 
I got to talk to you about this one. So for me, if I'm going to be objective, I'm going to put it in the B category. If I'm going to be subjective and talk about my own experience, I would put it in the disliked and brutal category. And this really goes to show you how much the teacher that you have is going to affect your AP literature and AP language classes, your experience in them, and how well you do on the exam. So for me, my AP language and composition teacher was absolutely brutal. He assigned a ton of work. He was the strictest grader I ever had in all of high school. The class was extremely difficult. Now, I ended up getting a four on the AP exam, which I was fine with. Um, but if I had had a teacher that was not that teacher, who was just, you know, a normal teacher assigned a normal workload, didn't grade super strict, then I'm sure that it would have been in that C category or that B category of about right and would take again. But if it was my personal experience, it would be in the D category. That teacher didn't know how to work the grade book. It was a disaster. But objectively, I would put it in that B category. All right, moving on. Looks like we've gone through all of the courses. So hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you're looking for SAT prep, college essays, college application advice, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Also check out my website. The link is in the description below. So as always, thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. Let me know your thoughts in the comments as well.